First thing you need to do is sign up for your wheels for the week. Please only reserve two days per week. Then you can grab a piece of clay from the fresh clay bucket and ball it up. The clay should be about the size of your palm. Then you can sit down at the wheel that you have reserved. Make sure that the wheel is on and set to the forward position. And then you can get used to how the pedal works, kind of like a gas pedal. When you're throwing, you should be anchored into your body and your hand should always be connected. Now I'm going to ball my clay up into a perfect ball if it hasn't been already, and I want to connect it to my wheel head, dry surface to dry surface. You want your clay to be right in the middle of your wheel head and unable to move. So now I'm going to get my clay wet and start to center. You can see which parts of my hands I'm using on the clay to center. I'm trying to push evenly from the top and the sides. If you can feel friction, you can stop and add some water. When centering, the less movement, the better. The more I just stay in one spot and apply even pressure, the more the clay will go right into the center. Now I'm going to open the clay. I'm putting my right fingers straight down into the center of the clay. My hands are connected and my left hand is acting as a guide. Now I'm going to open my clay so it's wider. Using the same hand position, I'm going to kind of create a hook with my two fingers and drag the clay straight back towards myself, nice and slow. This will create a flat bottom and determine how wide our pot is going to be. Now I'm going to compress the bottom of my pot. I'm doing this with my sponge, working from the inside edge to the outside edge, only on the right hand side of my pot. This compression will help to prevent cracking as my pot dries. So far, we have gone in and out, and now it is time to go up with our clay. From now on, I'm only going to be working on the right-hand side of my pot. I want the clay pulling through my hands, not coming at my hands. So I need to work on the right-hand side. So I've wet my clay down again, and I'm gonna create a little pincer with my left hand, and then my right hand is there to guide. I'm applying very even, gentle pressure and pulling the clay all the way from the bottom up to the top. This usually takes about two passes. You'll want to be very slow, gentle, and controlled while you're doing the pulls for your pot. And again, I'm always anchored into my body and my hands are always connected. After I've created the height of my pot, then I can spend some time shaping. Using the same kind of hand position, I'm going to apply more pressure with my inside hand to press the clay out, and then my outside hand is kind of just a guide. If I want the clay to go in, I'll just press more with my outside hand and then guide with my inside hand. I feel good with where my pot is at. I always say stop while you're ahead. After one final cleanup as the wheel head is spinning, then I can remove my pot from the wheel head. To do this, I like to wrap the wire tool around my fingers until it's tight in between my thumbs. I slide the wire tool underneath the pot, taking care not to lift the wire tool off of the bat as I'm sliding it underneath. I kind of do this a couple times and work the pot over to the edge, and then I can lift it off of the bat. Then you can place your finished pot on the shelf to dry. I'm going to start by scraping the extra clay off of my wheel head with my wooden tool. Then I'm going to take my sponge and I'm just going to clean off my wheel head here. I'm going back and forth from the outside to the middle and I'm also going to take some time to clean out my splash pan. There shouldn't be chunks of clay in there or any water left when you're done. Then I can put any extra little chunks of clay into my water bucket and take that over to the sink. If your pot fails or you have extra chunks of clay, place them in the clay reclaim bucket. Now I'm going to just dump off the water from my water bucket and then make sure all the chunks of clay and slip get put into the slip bucket. We don't want that going down the sink. 
and I'm going to really take my time to wash off my water bucket and my hands and make sure that everything is very clean for the next person. I'm gonna refill my water bucket just to the fill line and bring it back to my wheel with clean water in it. Don't forget to give the sink a once over with the sponge to make sure it's clean. Finally, you can give your wheel a once over with a clean, damp sponge to make sure it is 100% clean. If you've gotten clay on the floor or the walls, please take time to mop or sponge that up and also mop and sponge up the area around the sink. Then I'm going to do one more final check and get any chunks of clay out of the sink and just put those in the garbage. And then take one final sweep and clean up any other extra messes around the sink or the wheel throwing area. Wheel throwing can be very messy and with so many students doing wheel throwing at the same time, it can be a big mess. Please make sure you're cleaning your mess up all the way and this is what it should look like when you're all finished. And that's it guys, thanks for watching.